Hey everybody, Rob here from Prior Studios and I wanted to just kind of introduce you to some of the tools that we have inside of Cycles 4D. And first off, I want to show you how you can mix a few different nodes together to do something quite fun. Uh, and this can be used for all sorts of things like metal flake paint for cars or bowling balls. And it's how to just kind of add some sparkle. But So really the, the idea is to get some flake into this into the paint of this object. So I'm just going to move that out of the way and all I've got is a standard Cycles material which you get by going to Cycles 4D Object Material and you get these two nodes by default. Now I'll drag that viewer back in so you can see what I'm doing as I go. Now for this to update properly you can either go to the basic setting click update or if you've got a uh, a 3D viewport going as well, which I've just got there, so it updates, uh, that will do it for you as well. Okay, so I've got uh, a CUDA GPU rendering my uh, viewport here, and I've just set it to 30 samples. Okay, so let's get started. I want to, first of all, delete, so I'm right clicking, choose delete that first node, and I want to use uh, one of Cinema 4D shaders, because why not, we've got access to them, so I'm gonna right click in here, I go down to texture and I'm going to choose image texture which is slightly misleading in name because it actually means we can access anything that we would put into an image slot in a standard Cinema 4D material. So if I come in here and I look at its attributes, let's go to node settings and give ourselves a bit more room. So basically we're getting a slot that you're going to be very familiar with and I'm going to choose noise. Now Cycles has its own noise, but I'm going to use uh, Cinema 4D noise uh, to get going. And this is going to be just kind of the, the base for the, the colors. So I'm going to go for kind of a deep purple for the base of my bowling ball. And I'm going to go for maybe something kind of tealy. And I'm going to increase, uh, let's change the type of noise as well. Let's go for a swirly one, so something like that and I'm going to increase the size of it to say 200. So we have this preview, so this is our kind of deep bowling ball colour and I can plug that straight into the surface there. So surface being the kind of the, the, the outside shell of our ball, displacement being for bump and volume being for you know volume for clouds and particles and things. So let's just make sure this goes onto our object properly and let's get this to update. Now it didn't automatically update. Now the reason for that is probably because we need to plug this image texture into something else. So let's get ourselves a shader and a diffuse BSDF. Drag that over the wires and it should automatically put itself in the top slot. And now you can see that this is updated. And this is already starting to look almost bowling ball like but what we want to do is actually make a few changes so let's take this image texture and I'm going to control click and drag to create a duplicate and I want to take now a glossy shader so I'm going to go for a glossy there and I need to now control where this glossiness goes um, using this second texture. So I'm going to take a mix like so and let's put the mix shader there and I plug the glossy into the shader 2. Now if I leave this like this we'll get a, a kind of a very shiny bowling ball and we will add a gloss coat afterwards. Um, but for now I'm just going to increase the roughness just a touch. Um, I'm going to leave the IOR as it is, that's fine. Um, and close that down, we don't need to worry about that. And now we need to take this image texture, which if I move this out of the way, it's still gonna be a noise, but it's gonna be a different noise. Let's pop this up here. I'm gonna take something with, in fact, let's not use a noise, let's use a different kind of shader. Let's go for surfaces and star field. I think star field is gonna work perfectly well for this. So I'm gonna take the alpha and put it into the factor of the mix and now only where we have the white dots is where we will have our glossy shader showing and you can see that this is made a load of kind of reflective spots and it's reflecting the dark and the light in the scene and it's looking pretty good 
Still not quite there. So let's just move all of this over the way. And let's add another shader. Let's go for a mix shader first. We'll put that there. We'll take another glossy shader. And we will I'll link this in to shader two. And this is gonna give us a bit of this underlying and a bit of the gloss, and there's probably a little bit too much. So let's reduce that down to something where we can actually see our paint flecks underneath. So that's actually not looking too bad, uh, possibly still a bit too shiny. Of course, we could control where this lies with a Fresnel if we wanted to, uh, or any other way of doing it. You can mask off this gloss coat uh, using anything plugged into the, the factor input. Um, but this is looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to finish off um, by adding some very slight bump. And to do this, I'm actually going to use one of the noise textures, which is a built-in texture within Cycles. And we'll take that factor, and this is going to look hideous to start with, I'll just warn you up front. What I'm trying to do is get a very slight swirl into the finish. So I'm going to take my scale, and I'm going to take this down to, let's say, 0.6. And this will just disturb the reflections by making the, the surface just very slightly glossy, maybe a little bit more, uh, 0.9. Uh, not glossy, uh, slightly wavy. It's got a slight bump to it, and you can see that just disrupts the edges um, of the gloss, and it means that we've got a not quite perfectly smooth material. Okay, so that's one way of working with various textures and shaders uh, combining what you get with cycles with Cinema 4D uh, and it's a really powerful way of working and you can create some very believable looking materials. Now this is a bowling ball as I said uh, we could make this even better by combining what we have here with maybe some translucence. So let's take our we'll keep our gloss for the top so we'll keep these two nodes here we'll take all of these and just move them up. And I'm going to add another mix shader, uh, which is by far the best node ever made by anyone for anything. And let's take our image texture, uh, which is this one. So this is our kind of purple color. I'm going to drag that out and I'm going to take a translucent shader. I want the translucent color to be the color of that purple. So that purple color is going to go hooked straight into here. And we should find that this takes on a bit of translucence now. Uh, I think we probably need to have a bit more of that. And of course, the order you mix these in is going to have a, a big impact on what's displayed. So this is going to reduce some of the, the sparkles that we have, but it gives a real depth to the, the bowling ball itself. Uh, and that actually looks so it looks pretty cool. It looks like it's got some depth to it. You can see the shine better, and you can actually see some of the metal flake a little bit better as well. So that's a, a good way of looking at what you can do with cycles. And I'm going to be doing many more of these videos um, just showing you how to set up various materials. Um, so I hope that's been of some use, and I'll see you all again in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.